Welcome back to Vivid Noise. You might remember from my Championship Edition DX video that my experience with the Pac-Man games is kind of limited. For the longest time, I was only familiar with the arcade classic and then eventually got really into the 2010 reimagining. I later discovered the Pac-Man World Series via Nitro Rad's videos on them from a few years back, and among the trilogy was also this weird sounding game called Miss Pac-Man Maze Madness. That title gave me the impression it was one of those side character spin-offs that borrows elements of the original series series but then throws in some new mechanics and calls it a day. But imagine my shock when I watched said review of that game and then played it myself only to realize that it might just be my favorite non-arcade Pac-Man title out there. Right off the bat, let's talk concept. There really aren't a lot of games, at least not on home consoles, that have done what Maze Madness does and to the same level of success. The idea of a top-down adventure game that has you walking around segmented levels and solving puzzles isn't anything new. Bowerman 64 and Frogger on PS1 all did something similar years before Maze Madness, but those games all had some sort of action button that was integral to the gameplay. Bowerman had his bombs and Frogger had jumping. Miss Pac-Man on the other hand has no such thing. The entire game revolves entirely around the four cardinal directions, with the only exception being this one firework launcher later in the game. Other than that, you're sticking to up, down, left, and right, and the fact that this game's design is strong and inventive enough to never let that get stale is a testament to its quality. There are several aspects of this game that allow such a simplistic core to remain fresh 24 years later. The first one might go unnoticed on a first playthrough, but it's fundamental to the game's playability. The levels are all built from tiles, just like Frogger or the fourth generation Bowerman games. As the gameplay revolves around puzzle solving, usually involving movable blocks, having your character adhere to a grid allows the movement to be predictable and consistent. You always know exactly how far away you have to stand from a TNT box before it explodes, or exactly which parts of the maze you should avoid in case an enemy is patrolling a certain set of tiles. There is absolutely zero guesswork involved thanks to the grid-like movement, allowing you to feel confident in every decision you make before you've even made it. This is huge, because to extend game time, Maze Madness has a time trial mode, and much like the game's overall quality, this too defied my expectations. The time trial mode here isn't just a way for the game to force you to replay a stage pretty much the exact same way for what is essentially padding. Instead, the gameplay formula morphs into something completely different. All of the pellets and extraneous collectibles are removed, leaving you with just enemies, power pellets, and clocks for extra time, all of which have to be taken advantage of if you want to complete these trials. I'm not kidding, you get pretty much no time whatsoever at the start, and your only hope of making it to the next checkpoint is to optimize your route to the point where you can grab every clock and kill every enemy in one continuous motion. As I said a moment ago, the tile system is your friend here. You can minimize the distance between you and a timed hazard to save time, or perform frame-perfect turns by holding the corresponding direction before you've reached an opening. I seriously never thought I would compliment the speedrun friendliness of a puzzle game, but I'm just endlessly impressed with this. I'm also impressed with how Maze Madness handles its enemy variety. While the ghosts are a staple, much like the rest of the Pac-Man world games, you've got to deal with more than just them. Each world has its own thematically appropriate creatures that have completely different movement patterns and ways in which they respond to your presence. But to keep them in line with how you would expect any enemy in a game like this to work, they are still defeated in the same way, a power pellet. Although, unlike the ghosts, they don't respawn. This ends up creating an interesting dynamic between the classic ghosts and new enemies. Since the ghosts are always there, they function more as constant obstacles you have to plan around, while the new enemies are closer to a singular encounter. This, combined with the frequent stage hazards, is most likely why the scheme was able to keep me engaged for almost its entire runtime. I've never really been too big on puzzle games, you know, aside from Tetris, of course, and I have a hard time enjoying RTS or 4X games, you know, stuff that requires more planning and strategy than reflexes or level memorization. So naturally, I had my reservations about how much I'd enjoy Maze Madness, even after finding out it's not the half-baked spin-off I initially thought it was. I assume this would be one of those cases where I understand that the game is well-made, but I simply don't find any joy in playing it, but I'm happy to say that I was dead wrong. Maze Madness has a gameplay loop that effortlessly marries thinking with doing. 
The balance between dodging enemies or obstacles and moving blocks around in the right sequence, for example, is never lopsided. My favorite kind of challenges in this game are easily the more timing focused ones involving TNT boxes or ice blocks that you have to use over lava to create temporary platforms. You get the best of both puzzle and action with these. You first have to stop and assess how you're going to line everything up, and when you're done with that, you still have to execute a series of well-timed movements. Once again, the tile-based movement makes this reliable and oddly satisfying too. I don't know if I'm alone with this, but there's something weirdly enjoyable about a game where your movements are locked to a grid from a top-down angle. But it has to serve the gameplay first and foremost, and when it comes to Maze Madness, thanks to how the game animates and is presented as I already said, it might take a few minutes for you to catch on to the fact that you move in these set increments. And speaking of presentation, for such an unassuming game in terms of gameplay style and place in the market, by that I mean it wasn't some blockbuster title like a Gran Turismo or Final Fantasy, Maze Madness has some of the most tasteful production values I've ever seen in a game from this era. The color palette is rich, but still has this cohesiveness to it that keeps things from looking too eclectic, while the texture work is clean and respectable in terms of resolution for PS1. Thanks to how zoomed out the camera is, the use of image sequences for certain effects effects like fire and smoke almost look convincing, and the lighting is a thing of beauty. There's these pre-calculated shadows everywhere that are nice and sharp, and they not only add a greater sense of presence to the environments, but they also impact the shading on Miss Pac-Man herself. I'm sure it's just a series of flags that change the brightness value on her sprites and geometry depending on the tile she's currently occupying, but the effect is still pretty strong, all things considered. The soundtrack is, as Nitro Rat famously said, bumping. Every track is memorable as hell and have enough variety that they don't get old even over the course of the game's longer stages, which could take from 10 to 15 minutes. I just love how non-video game the music sounds. The production and musical choices made on these tracks, especially the ones for the Crystal Cave levels, are more akin to a pop instrumental than video game OST. The one you're listening to right now is my favorite track in the entire game. The harmony is conventional yet ever-changing in tonality to keep you in Engaged, and the leading and complementary melodies go together perfectly. However, with that said, I do think the sound design could do with a bit of work. Some enemy sounds are just way too loud compared to everything else, and the springboards make these really jarring noises whenever they reset resulting in a mess of noise whenever you hit multiple springs in a row. Also, while I'm still complaining, the overall game structure isn't perfect either, despite how great the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is. There's a handful of these slightly janky bonus games you have to play to progress, although they're not in the N64 version, so that's nice. And there's this thing called the Witch Key, which you get late into the game and is the only way to get 100% on some earlier stages. As a result, you end up running into that classic collectathon problem where you spend longer than normal trying to find everything in a level only to realize you simply don't have access to that part of the game until later. But you know me, I valued the moment to moment gameplay several hundred times more than the long term experience, although the critique is still warranted. To be fair, I still don't think the witch key is a total deal breaker since it only truly becomes a factor later in the game and some of the problems it introduces can be alleviated by doing more of the time trials for extra stars. Overall though, Miss Pac-Man Maze Madness went so far beyond my initial expectations that I implore you to play through at least the first few worlds of this game, and since Namco want to wipe Miss Pac-Man from existence, I think you know where you're going to have to look for a copy. Anyway, thank you so much for watching another episode of Vivid Noise, and I'll see you guys next time.